All right, I'm going to try to give you guys a quick update here on my solar that I mounted out in the woods uh, at my house. Um, this is the, I'm not going to really sugarcoat it, I guess. Um, I knew that the solar was going to be less than ideal in this property in the wintertime because the sun will basically be blocked by trees, I would say, for several of the winter months. So you can see on here the production values uh, starting in July, which obviously is the 7. I have it on July until the end of the year is what's on the screen right now. So July, August, September, all did pretty well as far as the kilowatt hours. And then as the days started to get shorter, as they do in Minnesota when it gets winter time, um, the uh, production basically fell off. October wasn't great, but it was uh, acceptable, I guess. Um, November, December, um, basically is where things kind of went to crap. We've had last month in December, we had the slow, snowiest December in many, many years. I think they said it was top three snowiest ever. So not ideal solar conditions. Um, so between that and the shorter days and being located in the woods, um, all of those are less than ideal conditions. So it's now January and uh, let's see if I can pull up January, but obviously we're only two days into the month. So we have no production shown on January really at all yet. Um, so, in the summer days, we're averaging between 40 and 60 kilowatt hours a day, um, which I deemed acceptable given the fact that the solar array is completely surrounded by trees. Um, obviously, if this system was out in the open and if it was adjustable, um, there'd be much higher production numbers. I One of my other YouTube videos I posted is the exact same solar panels on a adjustable ground mount out in a open clearing. Basically a relatively perfect scenario. And that particular ground mount is showing some pretty impressive production numbers compared to mine. So that basically solidifies the fact of having solar panels in the woods is not ideal. Would I change anything? No, probably not. I still like having them. I mean, they, they still will pay for themselves. Uh, the payback time might be pushed out a little further than I expected. Um, but they will still be paid off long before they're wore out. So I'm not necessarily worried about um, throwing up the red flag and calling it a terrible investment. I am kind of excited to see how things change as we get into the summer months again. Or spring it's sh it should get better um, I would say in the next month or two here when the days start getting longer um, right now it's dark by about four o'clock a little after four and it's in the morning it doesn't get light till probably around eight o'clock just a little example on a few things here uh, obviously Today is extremely overcast. There's absolutely no sun. The panels are clear, but it's pretty gloomy. It's supposed to start snowing here in a few minutes, so um, production is pretty low. Um, off to the left, you see my current incoming DC voltage off the panels, right around 240 volts. Um, about 300 watts per zone, which is not a lot, but 600 watts total at 600 watts we didn't have five minutes ago so we're not doing too bad given the fact it's not sunny um yesterday i was seeing numbers in the two to three thousand watt range it was much more sunny out but once again the sun was completely blocked by trees but it was a brighter day so i mean you still get production value it's just limited because of the time of the day or the length of the day and limited because of the obstruction of trees. So if there's any advice I could give anyone at this moment, if you're planning on doing solar and you live in the woods, my initial input would be to install them either 
as high as possible or on a roof which kind of goes down to the high as possible statement mine are kind of in a low spot but um, my house roof was not ideal and neither of my buildings were really ideal for a roof mount system my structure was built as tall as I could given the permit requirements um, if I could have put it five feet taller, um, I think it would have helped me out in a lot of categories. Both of my detached buildings create a quite a bit of a shadow in the winter months. Summer months, not as big of a deal. Once again, um, so we're kind of just playing this out, see how it works out as far as the, the 12 months of the year. I recently added a battery setup to my hybrid system I have attached to my inverter. Um, my inverter is basically designed to have batteries. It Everything works better in the event that I have batteries. So that was why I ended up going that route. This is basically gonna operate like a UPS. Power goes out. Um, I have a 60 amp panel in the house that basically is a emergency panel that runs off these batteries. I was unable to find a server rack that fit underneath the staircase where I have these things mounted that was intended for these batteries because they are heavy. I would say more than a hundred pounds a piece. So I just built a heavy duty shelf out of some PVC pipe and a couple of two by fours and nothing special. I'm hoping someday I can find a server rack that is intended for these batteries that will fit under there. This was just a quick throw together plan just to get something happening, get everything online in case we lose power. Um, my hopes are that this system could run all night on bare essentials um, or my house could run all night on bare essentials off these two batteries. It's about 11, 10,200 watt hours. Um, thinking if we're just running a couple of refrigerators, maybe a furnace blower fan. Um, I'm hoping that we could go quite a while if we're uh, cautious of our usage. Um, not sure if I'll add more batteries in the future. This was more of a plan that took place to utilize the current tax credits. As your system has to be completely functional in order to collect the 30% federal tax credit, um, you, you can't really add batteries later and then recollect on that. It has to be an entire complete system to collect on the tax credit. So hence the reason I bought the batteries now wasn't really on my immediate plan, but I, I didn't want to get screwed out of 30% off. Um, these are server rack mounted batteries. I will be doing a follow up on the price of our entire system. Uh, probably will go up with this video clip or around the same time. Um, just a reminder, when you look at the cost of our entire system, that this is a hybrid system. So many of the components cost more because um, this system will stay online in a power outage. It'll stop back feeding the power grid, but it will maintain loads in the house and keep the power on in the house. 90% uh, of the solar you see on people's houses and out in remote locations, most of that shuts off in the event of a power outage. Um, it's the safest way to do it. It's much cheaper. Inverters are way cheaper. Everything's cheaper that way. So just a little backstory on this that I could have done this entire solar array for cheaper without this feature.